After waiting for a few years for Mandalorts to come out, I actually managed to get an early access key. So today we're going to have a little bit of fun, guys. I am super hyped about this. I've been playing the schnapps out of this game since I managed to get my hands on it. And it's coming out in a couple of weeks from now, if I'm not mistaken. So until that time, I'm going to show you in today's video everything you need to know about the game. I'm going to be making this into a, a complete beginner's tutorial. So we're going to go from the loading screen all the way into how to build up your massive castle, have a successful economy going for your country how to build up your population everything that goes alongside it make sure to leave a like if we get 3,000 likes I'm gonna do another video on mana lords where we continue the saga as our established village and we grow in size get new tech and expand like crazy so we're gonna start a brand new game here we're gonna name ourselves the classic Ludi. change your icon there might be some more icons added afterwards so let's see but for the time being this is gonna have to do you can uh, customize your coat of arms I'm not gonna bother too much with that you can see behind me all the different icons and you have uh, three colors you can change the primary and the primary and secondary for your symbol if you change this you're gonna have also primary and secondary for the uh, actual background and I'm gonna say make it all black but my beloved Teutonic cross and let's head on out shall we because we have three setups here we can start with the rise to prosperity restoring the peace or on the edge setup each of them is a little bit more difficult so on the edge of course is gonna be the toughest however considering that a lot of you are going to be really new to the game i'm going to suggest that you go for the first scenario and that's the one we're going to be going for ourselves today end goal is going to be to reach the rank of a large town which is actually not too hard to get i'm going to go for a domination we're going to have a present off map adversary so we have someone to fight against and they're going to be a reactive that means that they're not going to press claims on our territories but they will protect their territories when we decide to attack them so it's significantly easier otherwise you have to fight against ai opponents and if you don't know how to play the game that's going to be pretty challenging we're not going to have any raider mechanics for the time being at least not in this video i recommend when you do your first couple of games you also don't activate the raiders raiders in essence what they do is they steal resources from your uh, camp from your city really and it's just random it's not really much of a flavor in my opinion we're going to start in spring obviously standard supplies as your starting supplies yes armament delivery so you do get some weapons when you start building up your storehouse to defend yourself with balanced resistance residential requirements which is the default medium approval penalty for approval which is the default underground water and uh, balance these are literally the normal difficulty settings take note there are some things that are likely not going to be um in uh my build that are going to be in your build but not to worry when the game gets fully released i'll be covering it again and updating this video if need be this is just a placeholder for you guys to properly understand what the game is about before it comes out and this way maybe you can make up your mind on whether you want to buy it or not if it's something that you like right now the first thing we want to do is of course see what our holdings like we can see the whole map here we have different territories and initially we start with one claimed territory as we progress once we make uh, our manor and we get certain resources we can spend some money and we can claim more territories build up cities in every single one of those territories however for the first part here we're just going to focus on our initial lands we have a little bit of a camp here with uh, five people or better yet five families first thing you can do is you can upgrade this to a work Worker camp that basically acts as housing for the workers which right now are homeless you're still gonna get the homeless prompt because even though this acts as housing it's not really the best housing let's be fair you want to build actual houses for them you also start with some supplies bread firewood stone and tools and also a few uh, extra timber one ox and a little bit of food to go alongside it for four months that's gonna last you the first thing you want to do is you want to go to construction and you want to build a logging camp because if you use up all your timber and you don't have a logging camp you literally have to restart the game because there's no way for you to get timber unless you have a logging camp so this should be your very first building in any game you start in Manalords. considering my location I kind of feel like I want to build my town here since there are a lot more there's a lot more open space there let's check what the wells are looking like as well so we're gonna go to residential we're gonna click on well and we also have a couple of uh, underwater sources that we can uh, start building wells around in this area whilst our starting location only has a tiny bit here so definitely the play would be to uh, build up our city over here so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna build our logging camp at the edge of the town right here we're also gonna build a hunting camp now remember that we need to build a hunting camp close by to wild animals there seems to be a pool of wild animals in this particular location so we're gonna be building our hunting camp close to that not necessarily doesn't have to be right next to it so we can say build it up 
here in the woods even here this looks good to me make sure we build a road connecting these lands so we're gonna attach it to the camp over there and we're gonna bring it all the way to the logging camp click to confirm and same attach the uh, logging camp to the main road now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the layout for the city and another problem we have is that we start with all of our resources right here so we need to make sure that we bring our resources from here to our new desired town location we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change the hitching post relocate from here all the way to where the logging camp is gonna be so that it's easier for our ox to uh, transport stuff most of the transport thing is gonna be revolving around timber in the early phase of the campaign and we want to use the one starting ox to transport that timber to whatever construction sites we might have also gonna change my town name so let's go ahead and name this to a proper German name which would be Ludiburg clearly Ludiburg is a famous German town name in case you're wondering and yes this is our technology tree in essence or development tree we also have policies that get unlocked once we've built our manor and production which right now is not available it will be available on release however even here a lot of this is locked in early access unfortunately so we're just gonna have to go with the technologies that we do have for now if we look a little bit around the map we see that we have various resources we have iron deposits we have berry deposits we have clay stone wild animals that I showed earlier and that's pretty much it for now so we're gonna need the clay for example and iron to build certain weapons first off iron gets mined and then after we mine it we refine it into iron ingots which afterwards get turned into armors and weapons and also clay is used to upgrade our buildings to higher tier buildings so it's good to be closer to clay deposits rather than further away from clay deposits problem for us is that most of our clay is in a different region we only have a hundred clay in our starting region so that's gonna be a bottleneck actually we're gonna need to trade our initial clay to upgrade our buildings but we'll uh, talk about that once we get to it before anything else I also want to explain what everything on the top part of the screen is on the left side we have the unassigned worker families because it basically represents a family not just one worker then we have the assigned ones whenever a worker is not assigned he will by default either work in construction or in transport so if he doesn't have an assignment he will transport timber with the ox or he's gonna build buildings pretty much the assigned workers will have specific jobs that they will do they will not go into construction whenever they're not busy in their own job we'll go into that a little bit more as we progress these are the amount of living spaces we have right now that is five because our initial camp was turned into a uh, worker camp so that's gonna be five spots available in that camp this is the total population the approval you need to get at least 50% approval in order to grow your city if you go below 50% approval even though you have the houses available it's not gonna bring in any new population the public order pretty self-explanatory regional wealth this is the money owned by the villagers and we have the livestock which would include oxen mules horses sheep and lamb and you can purchase these from the market afterwards or trade for them this is a rough idea of the amount of months that you have before your country goes to schnapps by not having the firewood or the food to sustain itself this button allows you to show either the surplus goods or the total goods stored and then if you hover over each of these it shows individually the amount of construction goods you have so timber planks which is created by turning timber into planks in the sawmill stone tools wooden parts roof tiles and blocks all of this is basically used for construction food self-explanatory and there's different types of food having uh, multiple types of food available on your market is also going to give you an approval rating firewood and coal is essentially fuel used in your houses the crops which we have none of right now crafting materials which will be used to craft either food or different items such as weapons and commodities of course are used with the crafting tools now that that's all said let's unpause and we have uh, three speeds by the way which are shown on the bottom right side of the screen you have normal speed fast forward and 12 times fast forward of course you also have pause you can do that with the space button if you like to not really much to do until you actually build up your log logging camp so we're gonna put it on speed 12 before we do so I'm gonna be uh, building up my uh, road network so that I can actually establish my town here we're gonna have this and we're gonna have a central square as I like to make basically do it that's gonna be my marketplace I like to have a big market so people have enough spaces in the market and then afterwards we're gonna start building in the residential part burgage plots we only have five timber so let's make two houses only for the time being I guess yes that works for me let's do it like this now guys very important there's actually two types of 
of houses that you can build when you build this up. So first off, you have a smaller type like this, which essentially is going to be the house itself. And it can have a little bit of an appendage next to it, but it's not going to have its own production. What we want from our houses is to produce their own goods because you can get goods produced in your houses. That's why we want to make a little bit more space for our houses. So we're going to go like this. And there you go. See, we have a little bit of an attachment next to it, which means we can get more pops in there, but that's not going to be enough. We need to make this even longer. There we go. Now that it's longer, we have this manufacturing side of the house over here. So in that bit, we can either get uh, some type of food, some type of basic goods produced in the house. You'll see what I'm talking about more once we have this uh, burgage plot actually built up. Very important. I'm going to order a secondary oxen. So we have two bulls to use from the start of the campaign. That means that we're going to be able to move items, move timber more precisely around the map a little bit faster. And as such, we'll be able to construct things a little bit faster as well. We got a message here. We can write back to Monsieur Hildebord von Berenut. You can write there. There's a few things actually in negotiation. You can declare war. You can ask for some funds and he might give you some silver or you can negotiate claims. This part here is not really well done right now with the early access. I suspect that it's going to be revamped before the game is going to be launched. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit of a disaster. So we'll talk about that and we'll have a video especially made on that bit uh, and on warfare itself when the game fully is released. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do that video. So I know at least if there's some demand for it. Now, one problem we start with is that we have our goods, initial goods and the initial food exposed. So we need to build a storehouse and a granary Otherwise, the food, especially and the goods, will get damaged by the weather. That means we're going to go to construction again, logistics, and we need to build a granary and a storehouse. We don't have the timber for either of them. So we just got to wait until this is constructed. We're going to give this a little bit more priority, very high priority for that matter. So we make sure we have this finished first. Then we can assign someone to uh, get timber to build the rest of the buildings required. Our hunting camp was done. We're going to assign one family here. So we start getting some uh, meat and some hide done from here. We're going to need that meat because our initial bread is going to run out super fast in just a few months. And honestly, you don't even need to have farming in the first year of the campaign. I prefer to build up my uh, population in the first year and start farming from the second year because you don't have enough pops to do farming anyway. And you don't want to waste your pops time building farming buildings and farming itself, which takes a really long time and it requires a dedicated uh, villager base to maintain farming when you need to build up that population. That's why building the burgage plot earlier is extremely, extremely really important and we have rain which is really bad because that's going to deteriorate our food Oof. and we also don't have enough uh hitching spots we need one more hitching spot so we're going to build it up here right next to the other one here we go we got logging camp let's assign one family there as well so we can start getting some timber i genuinely love to see this being constructed you can also click here and it's a visit mode which is basically your 3d view you essentially become a character in the world and you can go around your village and you can explore you cannot really do much anything else you cannot take out your sword you cannot go inside buildings buildings, you cannot jump, you literally can only just explore the area from a first person perspective. And that's pretty much it. That is for the current uh, stage of the game, they might do something else before the release of the game. So keep that in mind, press escape and you uh, go back to uh, third person view. And we got our first construction done burgage plot. Now because we already have space for the five initial families, they're not going to come here. And instead, what's going to happen is we're going to get another family migrate to our town because we have 50 or above approval. We also can change here and we can construct a backyard extension. We have three options. We can get the other options after we've upgraded our burgage plot level. I'm going to go personally for the vegetable garden and for the second one, I'm going to do the chicken coop so we get some eggs alongside some veggies. That way we diversify our food and by diversifying the food, we increase our approval and we uh, increase the chances of getting more population joining our camp. Also going to build up my granary and my storehouse right next to each other and in the middle of the city here and because I do still have a little bit of timber six timber I'm gonna build up a woodcutters lodge woodcutters lodge is really important because it's gonna produce firewood which is required for your houses one of the basic requirements alongside food I'm also gonna build a forester's hut so we can start reforesting the forest whenever you cut trees it's gonna take a while for them to grow back and you need to have your forester's hut in order to make sure you get your forest to replenish sooner rather than later for that matter the saw pit is also really great because it's gonna turn our timber 
timber into planks, which are required for certain buildings alongside the uh, building upgrades require planks. You probably noticed I'm building all of my logging stuff right next to each other. That's because it's going to be faster for my timber to go from one place to another if they're right next to each other. Just make sure that you have the, the road access for all of these buildings. Actually, I probably should have made a little bit of road access here. Yeah, that was a little bit of a mistake on my side. There we go. We can do this and go around. That is not the prettiest looking road, but it's still a road, so don't judge me, okay? I also like to separate my uh, industrial, so to say, part from my uh, living quarters. Let's also go ahead and get a secondary vegetable garden, I guess, because we don't have enough wealth for the chicken coop. We need 25 regional wealth. We only have 15. Screw it. I'm going to go do two vegetables at the start, and I'll do the chicken afterwards. And there you have it. Family members joined one of our settlers. Basically, the first house we built has just gotten a family. Oh, no. Stocks damaged by weather. No. We lost a lot of stone, didn't we? Yep, we lost a buttload of stone. But on the bright side, we have a massive stone deposit right next to us, so we should be fine. Here we go. We got our granary done, or almost done. Nine out of ten stone. Can we just get one more stone, please? I'm going to assign one family to the woodcutter's lodge now, and one more to the saw pit as soon as it's done. There you go. That's done. Boom shakalaka. So we can start building our more important buildings as well. And we also need more residential buildings, so let's go ahead and build Burger's Plot. Before we do that, though, we need a wealth. That is really important in case, you know, a fire starts and also our houses require water. So let's go ahead and build this up. Looks like they're already prioritizing it. I don't need to set it to high. We are missing supplies. Oh, that is not good. We do have actually meat. We just don't have anyone to transport that to the granary. So let's assign one family. So they start uh, bringing in the food inside the granary, which is going to make it easier for families to pick up the food from right next to them rather than picking it up from the other side of the map, which is where we spawn. We also have seven families. So we're basically capped now. Let's go ahead and build the uh, more houses, shall we? There we have it. Four new families are going to be joining us once we've done these houses, and then we can use them in uh, the other buildings. So, for example, we can assign temporarily one family to the storage here so we can quickly bring in the items left in our spawn point, and then after we unassign that family so they can uh, go back to the construction pool, which right now only has one family, so construction is going to be a little bit slower. Also, forgot to do my marketplace. So, that is in residential marketplace. Now, marketplace itself built as you progress, I'm going to assign the space for the market and whenever we have stalls, they're going to come in here and they're going to put their goods for sale in the market designated area. You want to make this as big as possible because as you grow as a city, you're going to need more stalls. There you go. We have our first firewood and food stall from which our houses are going to get their goods from. And we just increase our settlement level because we have five houses so we can go ahead and use our one development point to buy a technology essentially to invest in a technology. Some of these are really really great like for example uh, getting two charcoal from one firewood from the charcoal kiln is gonna make it so much easier to get the heating supply for your houses but that's not a priority I like the orchard albeit it's not a priority also trapping is probably the easiest and uh, most viable option early on because you get a passive meat income from your hunting lodges and food at the start is gonna be a problem because you don't have farming until the second year well you shouldn't have farming until the second year anyway and getting extra passive uh, meat in the hunting camp is just it's gonna solve that issue essentially we also managed to get uh, 20 large shields and 20 spears from uh, having built the storehouse that's when you get it and that means we can uh, make a little army but we need to get our manor for that so we go back to construction administration and a manor now the way that the manor works is very special it's essentially a castle once you've built it you can build around it a castle onto itself we don't have right now the planks to build it or the stone for that matter so we're gonna build Build it later on. First, we need to go to mining, build a stone cutter camp. We can get that done, say, here, and we can just make a road to it. There we go. Attach that to the main road here. Boom. That looks good to me. We got another family, so let's assign this family to uh, be a part of the forester's hut so they can start planting trees again. Because look at that, we already pretty much cut half of this forest here. We also have uh, more timber, so let's keep on building more houses. I like that you can even build houses like in a corner like this. So, for example, if we change this a little bit, we can say do like this. Yeah, there you go. That's one house and an attachment for an extra family in there. You know what? I'm going to do it just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Another really important part of your village is going to be your church. So make sure you build your church in the city as well. There we go. We're going to build this up right next to the marketplace. And right next to the church, of course, we're going to build a tavern whenever we have enough resources to build it up there. Nothing says uh, holy as, as well as a warm cup of wine says holy. Right, guys? Oh, my medieval cat. Catholic priests in the chat know what I'm talking about, don't you? I mean, to be fair, wine was definitely produced by monks in the Middle Ages.
villages and even today in some parts of the world okay i like to also uh, assign my uh, roads properly here so we're gonna have medieval city blocks or village blocks i guess you could say to make it easier to uh divide production so this area is going to be producing chicken coops all of them the next area is going to be producing i don't know freaking goat shed so we're going to have uh, hide from those houses and so on and we got a new family that's awesome that means we can assign that family to the stone cutter camp actually we need a second family assigned to the hunting camp because we don't have enough food right now we're basically running a one month supply of food which is not really optimal hey look at that we have another stall here and what do you know it's a firewood stall once more oh and we have some trees that just popped out thanks to the forester's hut which is doing a great job now we do have berries in our area so i'm gonna build a Ooh, is there any other berry no only there okay well i'm gonna get the berry house built here I'm not sure what it's called forager hut yeah forager hut i'm gonna build them uh here and let's make a road leading from there all the way to the stone cutter so they have a bit of a quicker path to the granary instead of going around the entire area to get to the granary now your very first industry should be the tannery we're gonna get our tannery done and we're gonna get it here at the outskirts of town right next to the well where a tannery should be tanneries are gonna use hides which are being produced by the hunting camps to make a leather and then that leather is gonna be sold in the stalls and that's gonna be the requirement we need to advance our burgage pot to level two it's also gonna cost us four timber but the timber is not the issue not having that leather is the issue time to get more houses done so we get more population and grow our little prosperous community into a proper town we do have ranks for the for our civilization so we are now at the rank of small village next one is going to be medium village then large village and then town and so on well, small town big town etc you get the point so we've got quite a few extra houses now i'm going to build a secondary well here just in case i'd like to you know not have a fire destroy my entire civilization before it even had a chance you know what i mean and we've gathered quite a little bit of stone and planks we're missing timber so i'm going to assign one more family to the logging camps to get more timber looks like our storehouse is also pretty much full so we're going to upgrade this to a large storehouse so it gets more spots 2500 if i'm not mistaken so we can uh, significantly fit more items inside i love the way that you see it actually being built they demolished it and they started rebuilding it this is very reminiscent of uh basically the old age of empire stuff building right but like a little bit better yes i know what you're thinking you're basically on the edge of starvation you only have two berries looty it's fine don't worry about it there you go we got 2500 storage now all right we got enough houses i'm gonna destroy this so demolish this boom i'm doing that obviously because i want all my people to have a house oh no we don't have enough we actually are missing one okay no problem we're gonna build some more lots in that case so i'm gonna build five more houses here to uh, make sure the last family which doesn't have a house has a house and we get some extra space for new people to arrive plus i'm getting the road in between so it looks nice and pretty because here we're gonna place our manor whenever we're ready to get that done also gonna be building my tavern as promised right next to the church where a tavern really should be placed right guys get my roads around the newly uh placed building plots as well look at that it's actually starting to shape up it looks like an authentic american middle age city you know because the u.s clearly had its own middle ages totally not became a thing in the 1700s right now we have the winter season and this is going to be a bit of a shocker to you but certain buildings are not going to be able to function in winter for example the forger hut you might as well take that family away from there so they can do something else during winter because there's no berries to pick at winter and it looks like we also are missing some fuel for one of the burgish plots so we need the firewood for winter so that people don't freeze to death in these uh, houses if you click on your burgish plot over here you go to general it shows if it's refueled or not this one for example is refueled and we can also expand living space which means we're gonna get that attached little house in the corner that i was showing earlier by paying just two timber that being said this burgish plot does not have its unique uh production because it just has two houses rather than a house and a production all right so now we have 17 uh, living spaces and only 12 families so we have space for five more families to come join us when that happens and it should happen by the early spring we will be able to uh, build up our farmhouse and start farming because that's going to be the main focus of the second year of your campaign set up a proper farming network because for example some buildings like the tavern is not going to be able to function unless we have the the alcohol to be sold there and we need to first off grow the hops turn the hops into alcohol and then sell it at the tavern let's go ahead and uh, construct our mana lord now so you got to go to administration a manor and just uh, build this up where
wherever you like to around here. We have four buildings we can build right now. We have the walls and gates, the outer tower, the garrison tower, which is going to increase the size of our retinue. And we also have the tax office, which right now is a cosmetic only building. So let's go ahead and uh, build up the walls and gate. Fairly intuitive system when it comes to uh, building this. And whenever the walls and gate are built around a um, road, it automatically constructs a gate, which is going to take a little bit of extra resources. So keep that in mind. If you want to have a lot of gates, you're going to have to pay the price for it. There you go. We can commit to this or we can build some outer towers. Now building the outer towers is going to be a little bit pricey, but building the outer towers also expands the area in which you can uh, build up your walls. So now we expanded the area so we could say build more walls around here and we can encompass the village itself as well. So the way to encompass the village is you build walls, then you build a tower along the walls and then you build more walls and so on. I don't have the resources for all of that just yet. So I'm just going to build for now two towers, the walls and the manor itself commit. And now the villagers are going to start doing their thing and we can just expand the walls of the city, expand the towers as we get more resources going for us. Okay. It looks like we are starving. That is not great. Do we not have any more animals? We do have animals, but it's just, we have a very high population. Actually, normally in the first year, you can get like 10 to 12 population. I kind of went a little bit too much on the amount of population that I have. So <laughs> I got a little bit greedy with the pops, let's say. All right, whatever the case, let's start our farming to get ready for whenever spring happens. Now you're going to have areas of your map, which are going to be better for farming than others. Obviously that's going to be the green area. So we're going to be building up our farming plots around there. Let's go ahead and uh, build our farmhouse here and then we're going to build our first field right next to it boom 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 and boom that's 0 0.8 morgan that's not going to be enough it's actually not going to be enough that's not big enough let's go ahead and demolish this and make it a little bit bigger shall we so you want it to be at least one morgan which is a unit of measurement for farming okay i'm going to make a, a square space there you go that's 1.3 morgan that's fine so it's not all fully green but it's still pretty good land overall and it's going to give a pretty significant yield of uh, whatever we're going to assign here so right click right click and then we can change this to wheat. Wheat is going to be turned into grain and then into flour and then into bread, which is going to be your main source of food for the entire campaign. We're going to also get a windmill and the windmill is going to have to be placed in a spot where it has a lot of efficiency. So that's usually places where there's not many buildings around. So like here is a perfect spot for that. And I'm going to build the oven right next to the windmill, but I need timber because apparently I ran out of timber. Fair enough. Tell you what, since we have um, so much pops, let's actually build a secondary hunting lodge and prioritize this so we so we get food from just hunting stuff and we don't lose the population that we managed to get considering this is technically a guide um my advice is to build two hunting camps around the point that you get 10 to 12 population but don't rely on hunting camps too much because as i said earlier your main source of food is going to come from farming from the second year onwards i really like how every single month of the year and you can see the month at the uh, bottom right side of the screen every single month the landscape changes so it was completely covered in snow now it's slowly starting to uh, melt the snow and you get like a spring biome followed by the summer and so on it's really really nice i love the graphics in this game like if anything this game is just beautiful to be looking at and speaking of let's actually look at the city itself a little bit from uh, a first person perspective to see what we've managed to achieve in just a few well in one year really we've managed to grow from nothing in one year to a proper small village i also like that you have basically proper mountains hills and so on and you can see this on the map when you go in into first person perspective a lot better than when you are in third person perspective that's for sure it is march and as such it's time for us to plant our crops we're going to click on the field here we have a few families already assigned to this there's four different stages first you got to plow the land and once that reaches 100 percent we're going to be sowing the seeds and then we're going to wait for the crops to grow and then we're going to harvest the seeds whenever they've actually grown towards the end of the year and that's when we start turning that grain into flour and then into bread so it's a process that takes a little bit of time it's not really instant there you go plowing is done now we're in the process of sowing our wheat crop my honest opinion is that whenever spring comes you want to assign as many families as possible to this i usually assign my construction workers so the people that are not normally assigned to anything which is like four or five in the first year or better yet the second year because after you've done the sowing and the plowing you can take them away from the farm they don't need to be on the farm continuously just for the couple of months in which they're going to be sowing and plowing the land that's it and then you bring them back afterwards when it's time to reap the rewards of your harvest there you go so this was done basically a hundred percent now we got to wait for the crop to grow so we're going to take these guys away from there we don't need them to have we don't need to have them occupied with the farm for now we might as well use them to build up that windmill there you go and the communal oven right afterwards and right next to it 
We also want to build up a sheep farm. That's going to be for the third year once we get a little bit more population. But of course, if you want to really rush it, you could do the sheep farm whenever you want to. It's not that much anyway. It's one timber, so it's pretty easy to get. And we just set up a pasture next to it. There we go. Boom, boom, and a boom. That's going to be enough space for quite a lot of sheep, actually. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love seeing my castle getting built. All right, let's check it out. Check it out. So, can you go through this area? No, we cannot. Can we go through the gate? No, we cannot. Oh, that's so annoying. You actually cannot go through the gate with your character that is pretty poo poo oh well hopefully in the future they're gonna let you go through the gate with the character can i now go through the invisible wall of the building that's gonna be built the wall no way wow okay well that's pretty poop let's spawn ourselves here in that case there we go like i said some of these things might be changed because this is after all early access so you might be able to do the things that i'm not able to do myself right now but uh do keep this in mind if you're planning on getting the game i personally do think the game has a lot of potential and I'll show you guys the military bits after we finish building the manor so you see what I'm talking about. Because the military, in my opinion, is pretty well done. It's kind of akin to the old Normans game, if you guys know that game, or kind of like Total War, actually, but on a smaller scale, because every soldier that you have is one of your population. So if that soldier dies, you lose a population, which is a big deal. You know what beats the hell out of uh, walking through your keep in this game, though? It's just going through your crops. Look how beautiful this is, man. You literally get to check the progress of your wheat, the wheat that will sustain your entire civilization. By the way, we can have blights and stuff that will affect the wheat. So these are random events that can happen. And if they do happen, it might mean a little bit of famine. And as such, it's uh, it's going to be bad. We might we might lose people to famine. We don't want the, we don't want that to happen. It's also high time we have our livestock trading post next to our regular trading post. We're going to set these up at the uh, edge of town. And I also need to get some mining pits done, one for the clay and another one for the iron. Hey, Take note, you cannot build these anywhere. They have to actually be built in an iron or a clay deposit. So make sure you build a road to that because usually these deposits are in the middle of nowhere and you want to make it easier for your pops to reach these deposits. There we go. Boom, boom. That looks juicy. That looks even juicier. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Amazing road laying capabilities, Ludi. Thank you, thank you. I always knew that I'm a great road layer. Also love how the more people go around the marketplace, the less grass you have because of the people walking on the grass that is so freaking cool and hey we have a decent amount of food now i mean most of our people are still starving but less starving than before i guess the progress on the keep is going pretty good as well life is good in ludiburg i guess is what i'm trying to say and speaking of good look at that our approval is sky high mostly because of the church level not because of you know the hunger we still have two families that are starving from not having enough food and probably being bored with eating only berries and meat non-stop but it's fine next year you get the bread i promise yeah that being said get Getting the church done earlier is really great because look at that. We're getting 17 from the church level. That is freaking massive. Hey, we got the manor done. Hell yeah. Okay, so now we can open the castle planner again if we want to. And we can build a garrison tower, which is going to give us those extra retinues. There we go. We can do it like this. Or we can do it alongside here somewhere if we like to as well. You know what? I'm actually going to build it next to my manor so it looks a little bit cooler. And I'm going to build some outer walls like this. One here, one here, one here. Oh, that looks delicious. That actually looks delicious. We can build a tower in this spot so we can start building walls around our town. But I feel like I want to build walls after I've uh, grown my town a little bit. Then we can encompass this whole area in walls, essentially. Oh, we don't have enough to commit to this. We need more timber. Oh, no. Okay, we're going to delete this one then. This looks good enough to me. Commit. And you guessed it, boys. It's time for us to harvest our crops, which also means it's time to assign people to the windmill and the communal oven. After I'm done with uh, harvesting all the crops, the same people that I have assigned here i'm gonna assign to the other two buildings right afterwards and we seem to also have policies available that is because we have our manor house built this is a thing you get once you have the manor house once you get higher levels for the manor you get more policies unlocked wild animals on rich deposit breed twice as fast or citizens skip every fifth meal what do you mean fifth meal they have five meals a day what that is horrible now we're gonna go for the hunting grounds this way we get more animals in essence see i'm a nice benevolent ruler i don't make people skip lunch come on also take note we have in the top right of the screen influence points that this is required for diplomacy and whenever you press your 
claim. So if we want to claim, for example, this area here, which is actually claimed by another AI, if we click on Selbiz or on um, Hofstetten, both of which are claimed by another ruler, another AI, we're going to need to use 2000 influence points to claim it with influence or to claim with King's favor. That's another thing we have here. We have zero King's favors, however, right now, and we only have 250 influence, not 2000. So we cannot get either one of these areas, both of which are actually really good. I mean, this one alone has 3000 clay and 40 wild animals. That is amazing. The only other option of claiming stuff now is just to go to construction, settler camp, but that is going to cost us 250 of our own treasury points. We're not taxing people just yet, so we're not getting any actual income. We will tax people in a little bit of time, probably next year I'm going to start taxing them, and then I'm going to build up my treasury, which I'm going to use to claim more territories or to recruit military units. That's also an option, right? So we start with the retinue once we finish building the manor house, and these we can spam by clicking rally and then getting them all over the map wherever we want to. So we can click here and our retinue is going to be walking over there, walking straight through that wall apparently. We can also create new units and we can form militia units or we can hire mercenaries. Again, we have zero in our treasury so even this brigand we cannot hire because we don't have the 15 to hire it. There's some pretty decent units here though whenever we do build up our treasury. Now these guys are actual citizens and we're going to be disbanding them so they go back to their regular jobs. Their regular jobs right now are in fact just um, good for nothings. That's what I like to call them. These are two families that are taken up whenever you build the manor and they're servants in the manor. They don't do anything but they do take up your actual population. So keep that in mind. That's why I like to build the manor a little bit later. I probably would not have built the banner for the first four years. I only built it now because I'm trying to make a tutorial here so you guys understand what it's like when you do build the manor and you understand the function of the manor. But honestly, I wouldn't build this in the first few years because it just takes up pops that you definitely will need to use in other fields. And look at that. That's the first time we don't have anybody starving. Hell yeah, that's beautiful. We also managed to get 27 wheat and we can get these guys out of there and we can use them to turn that wheat into actual bread now. Now that we finished uh, renovating the manor, we can also go over and uh, we can check what our people are doing. As I said earlier, we have two residing families in the manor, both of which are doing actually nothing. This is just a waste of pops. There's no function that they have, at least in the early access. Maybe when the game is fully released, they will have some actual function. Right now, they don't. Let's go ahead and start taxing. We're going to do 10% land tax and 1% tithes. That means a percentage of surplus food that is given to the church in return for influence is uh, getting tithes increases our influence, getting land tax increases our treasury. I'm actually going to do 20% land tax. Screw it. Let's tax the shit out of people, shall we? I'm role-playing medieval France, guys, and I guess modern France too. Now, I also want to show you guys how to use the trading post. First thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a family here, then we're going to go to trade, and we're going to be selling some materials, or what do we have extra? We have a little bit of extra planks, so let's go ahead and export planks. So everything above a certain amount is going to be exported. So say in our case, everything above 150 is going to be exported, I guess. We don't actually have any wealth right now to establish the trade route, so we're going to need to wait until we get a little bit more regional wealth. Come on, peeps, sell your stuff so we get more money. Oh, look at that. We have bread, berries, vegetables, and meat. If we have the stalls for that, we can also upgrade this, but we don't have. We need food stalls of two different types of food. So we got to wait until our peasants build up these stalls in the marketplace now in order to upgrade our bungalows and as such upgrade our city. We build up our secondary field here. Take note, guys. Between years, you want to change your field. So we're going to go and we're going to get fallow in this field and we're going to set up the secondary field with the wheat production. As you can see, we're getting 40% fertility from this field. This field needs at least one year in which it doesn't produce anything so it recovers the nutrients. Otherwise, if we continuously grind wheat every year in this field, we're going to get less and less fertility and eventually less and less goods produced from it. So you want to have a few fields around and alternate between your fields whenever you're doing your farming to maximize production. There you go. We also got our first food stall. We need a secondary one with a second type of food to upgrade this to a level two burgage plot. Oh, that looks so freaking good. I'm going to use this for the thumbnail, man. This is beautiful. It's also time that we built up our industrial sector. So we're going to do a bloomery here and right next to it, a smithy. Now, bloomery turns iron into iron slabs and then the smithy turns the iron slabs into tools. We also can turn clay into clay tiles right next to this. We already have the clay uh, workers hard at work getting clay from there. We can turn barley into malt and that malt's going to be used in our tavern, but we don't have a barley field just yet. Not a priority. That's going to be required when we want to upgrade to level three burgage plot since tavern malt is uh, one of the prerequisites. We also can get wool turned into yarn and flax into linen and we can also do dyes workshop right here. Pretty much all the production 
production there is for the time being but i'm fairly confident they're gonna add more production stuff in the future or hopefully by the time they release the game right i hope you guys enjoyed this video i put together in order to help you out on your mana lords adventure and if you did don't forget to leave that like and hey until the next time check out this awesome vicky 3 video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support